Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome to D1 for today, this beautiful Saturday afternoon. Hope you guys have had a great week so far and um, hope uh, the rest of the weekend goes as well for you. Um, my name is Joe Cartwright. I'm one of the pastors here at Sunnyside and this is my beautiful wife. I am Christy. Hi. And uh, as most of you know at this point, D1 is a a devotion, a daily devotion, where we take one book, one chapter, one verse, one thought, one prayer, one person, and uh, you guys, you know, like normal, have been the people we're going to share with, and so uh, we're going to jump right on in. We have chapter 14, and so... Uh, in the book of, of Acts. Acts. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I keep, yeah, I keep forgetting. I just say chapters. So yeah, Acts chapter 14. Uh, Christy, what was it that stood out to you? So when we read this, I highlighted two verses. I first highlighted verse 1. And then I also highlighted verse 22, and I settled in on verse 22, and it says, Strengthening the disciples and encouraging them to remain true to the faith. Quote, we must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God, they said. And I like this um, because it just encourages us to uh, work to encourage each other in order to strengthen our faith. Um you know, just to build up our relationships as um, brothers and sisters in Christ. And in the second half, we must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. That's just a reality of life as a Christian in following Jesus and chasing after him. It looks like um, hardships and difficulties. And it made me think about the um, concept of the wide road or the narrow road. The wide road being those not following Christ. And it takes the narrow road to get into the kingdom of heaven and just the concept that if you're on the narrow road and hard times come, staying on the narrow road means going through the hard times. Whereas if you're on a wide road, you can kind of dodge those hard times by not minding if you go outside of the will of God or outside of what it looks like to chase Jesus. So this was just um, encouraging to me that we will all go through hardships, um, but that it's worth it um, and to encourage one another. Well, and uh, first of all, I love the idea of the roads, um, but I also just as a reminder with your verse <clears throat> and that, you know, not at one point throughout scripture do we read where it just was just all smooth sailing all the time. Like, I mean, it's just, it, there's just a realness and a, um, a genuineness about scripture and about what Jesus endured, what Paul endured as, you know, his disciples uh, for the sake of who Jesus was and what he had to offer. Uh, and you know, and it's, I understand that some people are like, well, why are all these bad things happening? Where is God? Why isn't he here? Uh, and you know, of course us, um, you know, being me and you, anybody else listening, know that he is there, uh, and with us in those, um, in the midst of the hard times as well as the good times. It's just, uh, if, if everything was just smooth sailing all the time, um, it would be just one of those, it would be a religion that, anyone can do and there would be no testing of of why you do what you do it's um and so sometimes i'm i'm thankful to read and see some of the things that paul and these guys went through as a reminder that this isn't smooth sailing but at the end of the road um if we can go over those bumps instead of around them it'll be worth it it makes Um, me think about uh, the book of james where it talks about um, trials producing perseverance yeah it's like staying the course it just it all just kind of ties together with the idea of what it takes to stay on track and what it takes to get to kingdom heaven and, and just it being worth it. Yeah. And Jesus, I mean, Jesus said, you're going to, people are going to hate you because of me. Um, and, and, but then we also read, just like you said, hang in there, uh, stay strong, um, because it is worth it in the long run. So it, it's not all just like, Oh, this is a perfect religion. Just, Everything's going to be smooth, mm-hmm. but at the same time, it's not doom and gloom where life is going to be horrible all the time. And so there's just that good mix, and, and I'm thankful for that. Mine was actually uh, your one of your other verses, which was one. Uh, verse one, it says, At Iconium, Paul and Barnabas went as usual into the Jewish synagogue. There they spoke so effectively that a great number of Jews and Gentiles believed. Um, so the first thing that stands out in that is that uh, they spoke so effectively. We'll, 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 I'll pause there. And the second part of that is just that both Jew and Gentile. So people who were not a part of God's people, or, um, people who were considered some of the lowlier of the low. Um, but then you also the outsiders. The outsiders, anybody yeah. not Jewish, but then you had the Jewish people who did um, know the law and were, quote unquote, um, you know, try to be good people according to the law and do what they're supposed to. 
Um, but of course that kind of got skewed in the midst of things too. I just follow the law and everything's good. Um, so there's just kind of both camps, um, but even in the midst of that, both of them were added to the numbers and uh, gave them lives to follow and gave their lives to follow Jesus. But that effectively word is what stood out to me. And I wonder uh, in a lot of ways, what is effective? What is, what does it mean to, to, how does he phrase it? Um, to speak, so. to speak effectively. Yeah. To spoke so effectively. Speak so effectively. Um, yeah. And, and so, you know, what does that mean? Does that mean knowing the Bible inside and out? Just having lots of, of head knowledge? Does that mean on the flip side of just maybe not being super biblically literate, but just having all the passion and zeal on the, on the planet and just wanting to go after any and everybody all the time? Um, is it, uh, is it speaking with compassion? Uh, does it have to do with relationship? Um, does it, you know, speak in a way that you make it relatable for other people to understand? And I think that the answer is yes. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, and I think it has to do with all those things. And I think the other cool thing is that yes, you know, Paul and Barnabas, you know, Paul literally being called by Jesus on the road to Damascus, um, had a special calling. Um, but he wasn't one of the original 12. Um, he, he, of course, he was called by Jesus, but he wasn't a part of that original group. And then Barnabas and these other guys, he called. And so it just was, again, it speaks to discipleship to discipleship, and this trickle-down effect. Um, but these were, were people who just were passionate and cared and knew about Jesus and what mattered the most. I, because I originally was thinking about this verse, too, I think um, willingness. All the things you said, too, but just willingness. Because... Yeah, it says so effectively, which uh, upon initial reading would kind of make you think like, well, their words were so eloquent, so effective that they brought people to Jesus. But really, is that ever what it is? Or is it always God working through the willing? Is that why we're ever effective? Yeah. And I, th I think that's the answer. I mean, if our words are what's doing it, then people's faith isn't going to be genuine. Because if they're following us, then they're not going the right way. You know what I mean? Well, they yeah. aren't. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I didn't say that super eloquently because I didn't plan that at all. But <laughs> no, no, it's all right. <laughs> just I get willingness it. is my point. No, um, willingness is huge. Yeah. I mean, you got to be. How you have to have the desire um, to be passionate and to continue to study on your own so that you can answer questions, so that you can share the message of hope um, that you have in Jesus. And so, but even uh, before you have that knowledge, just just willingness. I yeah. Feel like yeah. I just I think it's is important and special too just to remind anybody here watching or watches this later or just for you know you know me and you that you don't have to be a pastor you don't have to be on stage there's not any special requirements to be able to encourage and share the faith that we have in Jesus and if we're going to be effective we've got to have a combination of all of those things mm -hmm. plus willingness regardless of who we are so. That, uh, that was my verse. Um, let us know what you guys think. We'd be super curious to, to chat with you in the comments. Um, you know, uh, again, I love that there's so many people who have been giving their insight to these passages and just sharing um, you know, what God has put on, on their hearts. And so keep up the good work, guys. Uh, we love you, and we hope to see you tomorrow morning uh, online for church. So let's pray. You want to close this out? Sure. Awesome. God, thank you so much for this time that we can spend together um, just digging into your word. God, I pray that you will speak into our hearts and our lives through your words, uh, through these verses that have jumped out at each of us. Uh, God, let us just have fruitful conversation where we build each other up, uh, where we can encourage one another uh, to continue to be willing um, to share your word. God, and let us chase after you and uh, invite others in this journey uh, to stay on that path with us that ultimately leads us to your kingdom. God, I pray for the church uh, to grow in a mighty way. I pray that uh, people can see the church in their communities, uh, in our community here and in just around the world, that they can see the church making a difference and they will know that it's not because of us, uh, that it's because of your love that makes a difference in the world. Uh, thank you so much for today. I pray that we all have a wonderful weekend and a great time meeting together tomorrow morning for church. And I just thank you so much for your word. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You guys have a great rest of your day. And again, hopefully see you. Uh, we hopefully see you tomorrow morning for church online. Talk to you guys later. Bye.